the tree data structure is one of the most interesting data structure because it could be nested in different levels, um, which makes it more dynamic than most of the um, normal like linear uh, data structures like an array or list. The way we normally think is a linear, uh, is a step-by-step -step procedure kind of thing. We, as a human being, we think of like a step one, two, three, and then we finish. That's kind of how we think normally. But the tree data structure is not in that kind. So you need to think a little bit differently. Let's make it a little bit hard to uh, get it right when you write code to uh, deal with the tree data structure. So in this video, we are going to talk about tree and implement the tree with React. This is also a very typical code challenge or code question in React interview. So I'd like to uh, go through you in a concrete example and we will build a tree component from scratch and you will think you will see how we think how we modeling the data structure and then eventually how to put your thoughts into code and then have something that can can show to the interviewer without further ado let's get started all right i have an empty project I created that with the white command line tool and now the project is only rendering a very static tree as a contact text there in my application TSX, I just have this tree, there's nothing else. At the very beginning of the interview, you will be assigned to a very complex tree data structure. And your task is to implement that and represent the tree data structure to React. So it could be very complicated, but we can start like everything else. We can start from the very fundamental or basic version of the implementation. And gradually we will make it more complicated and fully fit the requirement. But yeah, we can start from the only one level of the tree. So let's say you are assigned a task with this one. It has a nested structure. The food has fruit and a dairy. Dairy contains milk, a yogurt and cheese. Cheese has blue cheese. A feta and a cheetah, something like that. It's a very initially it's very nasty, complicated, multi-level tree data structure. But let's simplify the uh, task first. We can think of that like one level tree only. So we will need to implement basically this one. So for tree on the HTML, we can use the ordered list ol and the list element. ILI to implement or to represent that data structure. So our target will be uh, we need a food here and we will need a diary as the first node and the second node is fruit, right? So we only need to think of the first level of a tree. We don't have to worry about anything else. So with that in mind, we can think of the component that takes a name as the input. And if that passed in data structure has children, we can, you know, look into the first level and run the children, each children the name. So let's do that with a component, let's call it tree. And we will return a li which is a list item and we will pass in the name right we just run the name and the children is provided let's see it has a children so we will check children is provided right then we will run the another ol and uh, each of inside the ol we will run the a children dot map. Sorry, it will be a it will be expression children dot map. For each child, we run the li, and inside it, we just uh, run the the child dot name. Right. So this structure is like a, accepting a name and the children. If the passing the name, we run the name. If the passing children along with the name, 
will check and then wrap the whole thing around inside a OL. And then we map over the children to display all the child name. And then we can, in here, replace the static structure with a tree. And uh, we will need to pass in the name, which is tree data dot name. And children will be tree data dot children, right? And then if we look at the browser, it's rendering the food, uh, dairy and fruit. This is the first level, which is cool. We have already made some progress. Uh, that is great. And if we look at the requirement, our job in this interview is to implement the tree component that can handle any level of nest nesting. So now we can only handle one level. But if we inspect the current code, we can see that, uh, oh sorry, we need a OL as the overall wrapper around the tree here because it's just uh, the LI doesn't make any sense because they need to be, uh, to be the child of OL first and then we'll need to wrap it around the OL component and then, yeah, this makes sense now. So you can see the food has a, it is of the structure and there and the fruit. That is pretty cool. If we inspect this structure now, we can see some similarity here. We do the child children map, map the result is li. We know that the children could be a tree itself. So instead of using the li here, what if we use the tree itself to uh, recursively call the children the map? So that means we will do this tree name is child dot name, and the children is child dot children if any. And we don't need this name anymore. And uh, we're just using the simple, simplified version. Now the tree component is like if it provides a name, we do a li. And if it also provided children, we'll use this whole block to render the children, right? And for the children, we'll render the container first, the order the list. And for each of the child, because it will render a li first and it will be the name. And if the children has any children, it will be like recursively calling the structure. And, and that should build the tree in any depth. And let's have a look at the browser. Uh, yeah, it looks great. If you look at the UI structure, it's pretty much reflecting the uh, tree structure here. That's great. So I think the code can be consolidated a little bit further. So let's say we need a new type here. So let's say we define a new type, let's call tree node type. That type has a name, which is a string, and also it has as a children. The children is in a tree node type, but it's a list. Also, it's uh, optional, so in some cases it doesn't exist. So with this structure defined, let's say we have a component, I know, let's, <coughs> let's call it some tree, and it takes that node type, like a node, it has a tree node type. <coughs> and this component returns a OL first, just like this one. And then it will, inside it, it will render a tree uh, with the name to be the node dot name. And uh, the children will be node dot children. Right, this is some tree. And uh, obviously the tree is not a tree here. It should be called a tree node because it's a ili, which is a list item, which is already the leaf node. So we can refactor this one to be a tree node, right? So now this some tree will be the component, like the outmost component. We will expose that one and replace this whole thing here in the OL tree node stuff. It's, that's a sum tree here. So we'll replace this one, sum tree. It's accepting a node, which is the tree data. So in here will be node will be this type. And we will only have the sum tree component. If we go back here, but to move it around. So now we have a, a little bit different structure. We can rename it to tree actually. So we have a tree 
and we pass in the node which is the 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 one you you, was, you were given at the beginning of the interview and then it will unwrap the node to name and children and when it has children it will render the children recursively as a tree node so this structure is pretty solid now and we have a static tree rendered correctly that can handle any depth of the tree but sometimes you will be asked to implement even further requirement like for anything that has a children we will need to expand it or collapse it when you click the, the parent so for example if you click the berries it will expand or close it and also we don't want we probably don't want the the one two three four stuff because it's a default styling we can get rid of them by implementing some css here so let's say ol ol ii is the style type is now we don't want that to show up the but we want to show something like if the element has a children we want it to be expandable like showing a plus probably and when you click the plus it will expand it otherwise it will collapse so that means we will need to in the node we need to maintain the status a little bit so for each node we will have a separate status to control the expanding or collapse so let's introduce a status called this expanded and expand right expand is a function that to use the status boolean by default it's true let's say it's expanded and here we will check if the children does exist and is expanded is true we will show the children so only when it's the expanded is true set as true and also it has children will show the children otherwise if we have children but the expanded is false we won't show anything so now it should be exactly the same as before we don't have any actions yet but now we want the, the name to have you no know, handler so for example we want to wrap this around a span and make this one on click when you click it it will expand it will expand based on expanded it's expanded right so when you click it it will toggle the expanded variable status so now if we click the berry it will collapse if we click stone fruit it will collapse that one if we collapse the clip the food it will collapse all and if we expand again it will you know expand the uh, whole tree and yeah that's pretty much about how you implement a tree that can be expanded or collapsed so in addition you probably will need to add a few more feature difference when when it's collapsed or expanded but yeah that's will be you know as, as an interview if you're going well at this stage it's probably good enough they will probably ask you some further questions like how do you styling it how do you how do you test them properly and some accessibility questions but that will be kind of beyond our, the scope of this video so just to recap a little bit uh, to handle a complicated question or you know task in an uh, interview you always think of a very simple version of the implementation that will make you less stressful uh, you will be more focused on the uh, to make some achievement first and then gradually you build up the complexity in it and also uh, remember that interview is a it's an interview it's an interaction you need to talk to your interviewer to get some clarifications on the questions or like what they are actually asking so this is as important as you solve the problem perfectly and that's pretty much about this video i hope you enjoyed and uh, if you have any other questions around the interview or clean code in general please let me know in the comments as well don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on notifications when i have further tutorials or courses or even the simple videos like this you will be notified i will see you in the next video bye